the Lip, the show about surfing and skateboarding. If you'd like to join the show tonight, give us a call at 831-479-1080. That's 831-479-1080. And now, here are your hosts for tonight's program, Neil Pearlberg and Terry Campion. Good evening and welcome to another Off the Lip radio show. We are broadcasting from... Santa Cruz, California, the surf and skate capital of the world. Nice to see you back in the studio, TC. Thank you, Neil. Well, I had no idea where you were last week. Not a clue. I told you. Well, I, I forgot. Going, I had to go to a big trade show. I had to be I, a businessman. I, I told people you were home. It's what your wife told me to tell. Oh, tell, really? Yeah, you know, that's good. Tell like, one, listen, don't, don't, by all means. You're out of town. Listen to my wife before me. I sure. do. Thank you. Trust me. Good move. Uh, this, just before we start, this portion of the show... Right off the bat, is brought to you by It Ain't Pretty. Mark Massaro lives, our guest tonight. Two of the people highlighted in the movie are Ocean Beach locals, Bianca Valenti and Monique Kitamura. This film highlights a community of women who surfed, as I said, Ocean Beach. And they want to take you, what they want you to look at their Kickstarter program because they are going to come up with some, needs to come up with some money for this movie. Billy Graff is in studio. Am I too loud? Too- yeah, you were blown up, huh? I heard that. Was I too loud, Billy? Yeah. I'm we, trying you, to pump woke- up the women surfing here, Billy. <laughs> Back off, dude. Back off. You woke Billy up, man. I Come know. on. I'm sorry, Billy. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for the instruction. Uh, that has been blowing up in the surf world, all over the media, social media, everywhere. It's Martin's Beach is the place to be or not to be. Well, it's, I think, one of the biggest beach access stories in the world right now. Right. And uh, I don't know. You probably did a little research. I did some research. And uh, New York Times, LA Times. I mean, this thing is hot off the press. So right. I'm dying to find more out about this. So, Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you, Neil. Would, would thank you, you TC. For people pleasure who, to be here. Thank you very much. For people who aren't aware of what's going on for Martin's Beach, the audience... Who sure. Martin's Beach is one of the most uh, spectacular beaches on the entire central coast. It lies... Um, a few miles south of Half Moon Bay, between Half Moon Bay and uh, Santa Cruz, and uh, for more than a century has been a really uh, treasure and a prize for Central Coast residents and visitors for fishing, beachcombing, surfing, and just enjoying a wide sandy beach. It's a gorgeous uh, location. And the situation has arisen because uh, there was a, uh, am I correct? That's right. And, and, and the situation, with, but can you tell us about the situation that's arisen and why you're now involved as an attorney for Surfrider involved in this case with uh, Vinod Kosler? Is this correct? Is pronouncing his name correctly? Vinod Kosler okay. is the owner. He's a billionaire Silicon Valley right. high tech investor. Um, and the irony is, is that Martin's Beach was owned by a, a single family, the, the Dini, Dini family, family right. for nearly 100 years. And the Dinis welcomed the public seven days a week, uh, virtually year-round. Uh, around 2005, the Dini family decided to put the property up for sale. It's 89 acres on the west side of Highway 1. Um, Along at state parks and other organizations looked at buying that property, um, but the price was out of reach. Um, Vinod Kosla came along in 2008, and after meeting with uh, the staffs at the California Coastal Commission in the county of San Mateo, who uniformly informed him that he could not take a public beach and close it and make it private without So, so he was aware of it before he bought it? Uh, paint over welcoming billboards that had been there for decades and otherwise tell the public to go pound sand. Okay. Do you see? Uh, how can that be? If the president was set that he was told that you can't lock the gate, how did the gate get locked? Well, he and his, he and his henchmen went ahead and did it. I mean, this is, this is not unusual up and down the coast. The California Coastal Zone is the world's most sought-after, prized, expensive dirt on the planet. And when, oftentimes, unfortunately, when celebrities or wealthy people get these beaches, the first thing they want to do is exclude everyone else uh, and attempt to just enjoy them in private. Uh, it also enhances the underlying property values. Right. And so for a guy like Vinod, who doesn't live there and apparently rarely even visits, it's more of the thought of having a private beach than the actual uh, possessing the private beach that apparently drives him. Uh, and his lawyers, the San Jose law firm, convinced him uh, that he could get away with this. And indeed, for several years, he did get away with it. He sued 
the Coastal Commission and the County of San Mateo in 2009 for a declaration from the court, uh, a Superior Court in San Mateo that he owned a private beach and he lost that lawsuit. Amazing. And, and the court told him you have to get a permit to close this beach and he did it anyways. Right. Well, it first came to attention to me. I saw a story of those, uh, f I believe four guys got uh, cited for surfing. Five. five guys, yeah, the five guys who got cited at the is, beach. Is that when it started, when the five guys got cited? Is that when it kind of it, all came to Well, it seemed to me, at least in my case, it, that's when it came to my attention. And my question is, what happened to that case? Because I think they were trying to fight that as well. They won. Uh, the, it, got, the, it got thrown out of court. The, yeah, the five guys that went down to the beach and went surfing while Vinod had the security guards and the other measures to prevent the public from going down to the beach uh, were arrested by the San Mateo County Sheriff's Department. They were issued citations for trespassing. They fought uh, those uh, citations and the County of San Mateo, the District Attorney's Office, refused to prosecute them. And the Sheriff's Department has come out since that time and said that they are going to protect the public and the public's use of Martin's Beach. In essence, inviting the public to park along Highway 1 and take advantage of this spectacular public coastal resource. So, so at this point in time, if I wanted to go and clam dig at Martin's Beach, I can park on the highway and walk down there and it's legal. That's right. Uh, they, you know, there, there's an intimidation factor, but if you know the history of what's going on and the legals behind it, uh, you're more than welcome to use that beach. How, how are we going to get intimidated by going down there? Just I would... TC and I just marching down there. I don't see to be doesn't seem to Surfers be intimidating. Surfers don't have a problem with it, but sometimes m mothers with children right. or you know senior citizens wanting to take a walk on the beach are intimidated by s paid security guys Correct. asking you what you're doing. Okay, well, All it's right. definitely not welcoming. <laughs> right, you know, I well, think no, that's the vibe. No trespassing signs plastered all over the place. Okay, yeah. on the phone right now we have Ken from Capitola. Ken, are you there? Yeah. How are you? I just tuned in late, so I'm not. Uh, I heard the topic of Martin's Beach. Okay. Do you have a question for Martin? And as Sorry, a Martin? Uh, kid, I grew up going there, uh, smelt fishing with nets. Uh, remember it fondly. Okay. Um, no, but what I was curious about is there seems to be a meeting at KSCO right now outside with a number of. Uh, there was a, there was a live oak something or other group of people taking a stroll and coming into KSCO. They're all headed up to Martin's Beach now. They're all here. They're all going to protest outside Martin, but there's a bus that, that picked them up and they're on the way up there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Ken, thanks for giving us a call. We really appreciate it. We've got to move on. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, there used to be a sign. I used to drive by Martin's Beach. There was a sign. Last time I drove by and looked at it, it was whitewashed. Is that... So it's... it's the, it, no one's being invited down there at all to... to come enjoy that beautiful piece of property because it's a spectacular beach. It's, I mean, it's, from Halfwing Bay to Santa Cruz is spectacular enough, but that's like e even a, a, a league higher, isn't it? I mean, personally, I think it's the nicest beach on, on that whole stretch of coastline. It's a, it's a south-facing sandy beach and, and predominant northwest winds that we get here in the spring and the summer. It remains really nice. Right, and the, the, home, the, the people that live down there, the tenants that live in those buildings that are down there, uh, do they have a right to say anything, or is, have they come up and said something about what's they're, going on? Well, they're lessees, and they're on uh, what amount to short-term leases. Uh, around 2021, Vinod will be able to evict all of those people, and the right. thought is that uh, he would like to eventually tear them down and build a few uh, luxury mansions there. Okay. It, like, it describe the, that, because I, like we, earlier I was telling you, I've been driving the coast for 35 years. I never went down to Martins Beach, but there's actually quite a community down there, and describe what that community is. There's uh, approximately 40 uh, older Surf shacks uh, is a good description. A couple of public restrooms. There used to be a community store. You could buy food while you were down there. And the public had been invited by the Dini family for you know over seven decades to patronize that beach, and you would pay for parking. They had a parking lot down at the beach, right? And it ranged from ten cents to you know seven dollars. Okay. Um, and literally thousands of cars. We're going down to Martin's Beach annually, right up until 2010. It, it's 
yeah, I guess it's 1,000, and let me see where I got the... Uh, yeah, from July 2008 to September 2000, 2009, 1,044 vehicles visited Martins Beach. Well, those are just the records that we were able to subpoena from Vinod Kosla. Okay. I mean, there were lots of other times when no one was counting or charging or taking money or right. keeping track. Okay. Or uh, who, who parked on the highway and walked down, those right. numbers on... Now, of those 40 structures, how many are full-time residents? It's hard to know. Um, any, it's anyone's guess. It, you know, most often not, when I'm down there, I don't see a whole lot of people. Okay. It, it seems like that's the what I've heard too. We got Thomas from Santa Cruz calling in. Hey, Thomas. Good evening. Welcome to the Off the Lip Radio Show. Thank you, thank you, um, and thanks for the work to keep that beach open. I do have a question, and I've been living in Santa Cruz roughly forty years, so a lot of my life, way more than two thirds of my life. Okay. I remember going to a beach called Private Beach, right. and I used to go in there for nothing. And now, anybody wants to go in there, they have to buy a $100 a year pass, which essentially makes it a private beach okay. as far as a lot of people are concerned. I wonder if anybody can uh, change that. Let me ask Mark about that, about privates up down the street here. Do you... Privates was established as a community beach for that subdivision that surrounds it. Right. There's a long history of represent representatives of that subdivision caring for that beach as far as uh, there were hearings in front of the coastal commission uh, and concerns about the annual fee and i think the answer to at privates is a daily fee for out-of-town visitors if right. they'd like to visit for just a day um, i've been there it's nice right interesting fact about privates is i live in that community they used right. to give us a free key which we don't get anymore <laughs> okay now you need to sort that well, out because it does, yeah. it does cost money to keep <laughs> those places up and and the state the coastal commission recognizes that no one was saying that vinod couldn't charge a fair access fee right it, it was just that he could not close the, the beach gate. entirely without a permit right. the california coastal act is exceedingly clear on that point he has no legal footing to be fighting this other than a big bank account. Okay. Deborah from Orange County is on the phone. Hi, Deborah. How you doing? Are you going to complain about me saying Santa Cruz is the surf capital of the world since you're from Orange County, or you happen to agree upon that? <laughs> I definitely do. I just wanted to listen in to kind of see what's going on in that northern California pocket, so I figured I'd join in. Okay. You have a question for someone here? No. I just wanted to kind of listen and just kind of see what... Um, you know, it's going to end up transpiring here. Hopefully something positive towards the end of the well, week here. Keep listening and we'll see what happens here. Mark, we're going to delve into Mark's mind and uh, see, what's, see what he brought in his briefcase. So thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. The, Super. Thank you. To get back to that charging part, it totally makes sense because somebody has to remove the trash and, you know, to maintain the facilities. And I totally understand that. But he has no intentions of doing that at all. No, he has destroyed the public resources down there. He's allowed the parking lot to become dilapidated and wash away. He allowed the bathrooms to fall apart and claims that he needs hundreds of thousands of dollars to rebuild them. He closed and, and took down the store. I mean, all of the facilities that were designed for visitor serving and public use have been destroyed. Right. Hmm. Okay. Before we're going to talk to Dylan Christensen, who's one of the surfers that surfs down there, correct, Dylan? Yes. Okay, we, this portion of the show is brought to you by Freeline Design Surf Shop, celebrating their 45th year in Santa Cruz on Sunday, July 27th, 2 to 6 p.m. Freeline is having a bash. Yeah. I'm going. You hear about that? Uh, the Mel family and their staff want to say thank you to all their many loyal customers over the years, uh, and they want to invite you to their anniversary party, providing food, soft drinks, gift giveaways, games, a dance band, and more. Like it. What's more? I'm going. This has been the Off the Radio Show you're listening to, and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Thinking of a vacation in Santa Cruz? Then contact Beach Nest Vacation Rentals at 831-722-0888 to make your reservation. The very best local vacation management company with their staff will take care of the tiniest of details to better your memorable Monterey Bay holiday. They are pet friendly with a choice of homes on or close to the beach in Santa Cruz and the Central Coast. For further information, go to beachnest.com or follow them on Facebook. Hello Highland Grill, corner Portola Drive and 17th Avenue, featuring mouth-watering plate lunch. 
we're proud to celebrate 10 years of serving the Santa Cruz community. And we'd like to send a shout out to Neil and TC for doing a great job for over a year here with their Off the Lip radio show. We're open seven days a week, 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. Visit us on the web at alohaislandgrill.com. Like us on Facebook. For to-go orders, call 479-3299. Congratulations once again to Neil and TC for one year on the air. Aloha Island Grill is a proud member of Think Local First. Hey, would you like to learn to surf? If so, you got to check out the Easy Rider Surf School. Locally owned and operated by father and son team Joe and Liam Hessian, who have a combined 50 years of surfing knowledge between them. Focusing on smaller classes for more individual attention, Joe and Liam provide a comfortable and relaxing atmosphere. Just steps from the beach where each student can experience some of the best waves Santa Cruz has to offer. So don't wait. Get yourself up and riding this summer at Easy Rider Surf School. Call 650-722-7580 or visit easyridersurfschool.com or like us on Facebook. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Hi, this is Steve Pereira, the beach guy at Bailey Properties in Santa Cruz, California. If you're looking for a beach home or a coastal property, give us a call at 831-818-7064 or you can call my wife, Diane, at 831-818-5939 or drop in on our website at lifesabeach.com and check out all the inventory in all price ranges. We've been selling beach properties since 1982. We're here to help you. Give us a call today. And we are back with the Off the Dead Radio Show, broadcasting from Santa Cruz, California. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, the Surf Channel. What else we on? That about covers it. Facebook. Uh, are we still blowing Facebook. up? Are we still well, blowing up we're, not doing, we're doing pretty good on Facebook, by the way. Like 100,000 people looked last week, I heard. This portion of the show is brought to you by Sand Dollar Ding Repair Felix. If your board is screwed up, messed up. Gashed. F- gashed. <laughs> whacked. <laughs> Seven two two forty sixty. Felix is the man. Twenty one years. Your board. Twenty one years. Is that? Have you seen the beard, lady? The beard is massive. It's I, on f- huge. Well, I, I think he stores tools in there. He does. <laughs> trivia question this week. Last week's guest host on the spur of the moment, because TC was uh, out of town. Business was whom. 831-479-1080 is a phone number. 831-479-1080 if you want to call in and you're going to win a hat of your choice in the boardroom. Who was last week's guest comical host? Hmm. Right now we have a gentleman from out of state. We got Matt from, I don't know where, Matt. Matt, where are you from? I'm from uh, Oregon. Matt, how's it going? Um, Welcome to the Off the Radio good, Show. Matt. Thanks. I got a question from Mark. Um, I was curious of why you're representing Surfrider and not Coastal. Like, why isn't the Coastal Commission um, dealing with this instead of Surfrider first? And I have a question with regards to how effective you think the Coastal Commission is at defending um, public public property and public access along the California coastline. Thanks. The, the easy answer is that the Coastal Commission should be uh, enforcing this situation and should be litigating this case. Uh, unfortunately, um, the Coastal Commission and their staff tend to be overworked and underpaid. Their budget uh, doesn't allow the kind of aggressive enforcement that you might otherwise expect or hope from the Commission. It's true that the Commission is the largest coastal land use regulatory body in the world. The problem is that their budget uh, and their specifically their enforcement staff is not big enough to fight every Coastal Act violation uh, occurring in California. There are literally thousands of them. And if you're following what's coming going on in Sacramento, uh, Governor Brown has just approved um, the Coastal Commission levying civil fines and penalties administratively for the first time, which means that in the future, when people like Vinod close down public beach access ways, they'll just be able to send them fines. The way that we're having to litigate this case on behalf of Surfrider is to prove in court that Vinod Kosla is violating the Coastal Act, and then the court is free to impose civil fines and penalties on Vinod of up to $15,000 a day. Now, if you multiply that over the number of years that he has illegally closed Martin's Beach, 
you come up with civil fines and penalties in the tens of millions range. And that's what we're looking for. He can certainly afford it. And in this case, an example needs to be made. Okay. Matt, thanks for giving us a call, buddy. I hope you got your questions answered there. Uh, I'm going to go to Dylan right now. Dylan, um, you're a surfer, uh, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Apple surfer. Now, I heard now this, this all surfers on done. This guy went here, I think he went to Stanford. Am I correct? Yes, I did. Did you go to Yale too? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> I bring in the smart guys. Good job. Yeah, Stanford and Yale. Although I have okay. to say that did get okay. in the way of surfing. Why did I drag you? Why did I drag you in the studio this this, this evening? I can't remember. Well, basically, what's your, I, what's your involvement I, in this whole thing? My involvement is I've been kind of at the forefront of running the whole Open Martin's Beach campaign online. Okay. Uh, just trying to get the information out there, get people involved. Uh, kind of, there's a lot of coverage of this topic, and there's a lot of information that people aren't aware of. How's public pressure helped? How's how's public pressure helped someone like Mark? Uh, it, it helps quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, politicians are definitely listening on some of the bills that are making their way through the, the state legislature. Uh, you know, also even Vinod is listening online. Uh, he does pay attention. So everybody that keeps up the pressure does, you know, does move this along okay. uh, in a positive direction. Okay. TC, what do you got? Well, it, I, I like how Vinod says it's been sensationalized by the media. And um, earlier I was mentioning, you know, he has a history of being a green friendly, uh, I, I even called an environmentalist. Why would he go through such, in your opinion, why would he go through such great lengths to tarnish his image and name over a beach he doesn't even hang out at? Yeah, I honestly don't think he's a bad guy. I just think he's received some really bad advice, perhaps from lawyers that think that they can get this pushed through. And, you know, I think that, you know, while he tries to adhere to that he's following the law, I think that, you know, public opinion is definitely against him. And I don't think he realizes kind of that overwhelming force of, you know, right. negativity that can surround you know, some actions of, as closing the beach, violating the Coastal Act. Okay. Well, in the, in, I know he's very wealthy. How much do you think he has spent to this point for this cause? I'd say probably, you know, four or five million. I would guess. Mark, what are you mm -hmm. thinking on that? Oh, easy. And, and uh, millions annually. So the Rolling I Stones mean, gathered moss here. It's kind of tough to go backwards on that. The well, lobbyists, the PR people, the law firms, right. and all uh, the headaches. Right. You know, you have to ask yourself, what's the benefit of this? Uh, clearly, there isn't any. He's going to be remembered as the Scrooge of the Coast. His reputation is act actively being destroyed by this case. Okay. Um, on the other hand, we, he never expected that we'd be able to mobilize the kind of activism that's currently occurring nationwide around this particular beach. And we're so fortunate that, um, that Dylan and his wife and Surfrider Foundation and coastal activists up and down the state of California have turned out to support what is a a, a sort of a, a legendary A-list team of lawyers that are working on this right. because make no mistake, it's not just me. Right. I mean, we have one of the most um, successful trial, trial lawyers in America, Joe Cochette, and his law firm and his uh, colleague, Eric Boucher, working on this nonstop. We have a former congressman, Pete McCloskey, who ran for president. Joe Cachette oh. said, not a rocket science case. Coastal are arguing he does not need a permit from Coastal Commission to close the gate. That's right. right. The Coastal Act is absolutely clear that if you engage in development, you must get a permit. Which, and the development is closing the gate? No, the definition of development is any action, either physical or non-physical or direct or indirect, that impacts people's ability to reach the shore. Okay. And that's exactly what's going on here. Even if you just stood up with your hand right. and prevented people from going to the beach, you'd have to have a permit if that reversed a century of public beach access. Okay, let's see what Steve from Felton's got to say. Hey, Steve, thanks for hanging on there, buddy. How are you? Buddy, um, this, is, uh, this is really complex, uh, layer upon layer of really nasty stuff. So I'm not so forgiving of Kosla. I, I think he's every bit the turd uh, everyone thinks he is. I, I, um, I am just finding out this stuff one by one, and I do have a couple of questions, but first I was just amazed at this rusty Arias and uh, Luis Alejo. Uh, the shenanigans behind that whole thing is in and of itself uh, a conspiracy. And Coast was behind that, and needless to say, probably funding all of this. Uh, of course, he can, and so he does. Mark, do you want to talk about that? 
Well, Vinod is a, is a prolific uh, campaign contributor in the state of California. He provides hundreds of thousands of dollars to primarily Democrats, but all candidates all up and down uh, the state he's, of California. He's loved by the Democrats, correct? He, he has benefited greatly right. with, from government subsidies yeah. in his green tech adventures. So, Steve, do you Can I ask you... Sure, go ahead, Steve. What, what, what did Luis Alejo specifically do to water down this imminent domain um, uh, legislation that was written up by... Sure. I can't remember who, but he actually is... The campaign... Um, person behind him is Rusty Arias's wife, apparently. That's right. So so Alejo owes Rusty some favors, and of course, Rusty is working for Kosla, and this all stinks to high heaven, and um, of course, a lot of the public doesn't, doesn't understand um, the who and the what and the when and the dates and the, the names. Well, and and, I, and these um, folks are all local, Central California politicians right. as well. It's, right. it's really interesting. Um, it, there are two legal cases and legislative battles in Sacramento. So Rusty Areas, who is both the former chair of the California Coastal Commission and the director of state parks and a former assemblyman uh, from the Monterey uh, Salinas area, uh, works and is a partner with a lobbying outfit in Sacramento called California Strategies. Yeah. When the legislative uh, battle heated up, when Senator Jerry Hill from San Mateo sponsored legislation requiring the California State Lands Commission to condemn a public trail from Highway 1 down to Martins Beach, uh, Vinod hired Rusty Areas, and it's no inexpensive prog program, to lobby legislators in Sacramento to oppose the public establishing through eminent domain a trail to Martins Beach. Right. What Alejo did was he opposed uh, any uh, interference with Vinod's property rights. So what Alejo and Rusty were able to achieve was that they were able to modify the language of the legislation so that California State Lands Commission is no longer uh, required to condemn that property within one year. Right. Instead, they are permitted to condemn that property right. within one year, and it's a, it's a big difference. But I think with the, um, the with the public uh, motivation to see this done and the support of San Mateo County in favor of having it done, uh, it'll get done. You know what's funny? You can enter, you can enter this country legally, but you can't get access to the beach. Mm, good point. I got a question for Dylan. Mm -hmm. Can you describe, because I know a lot of listeners have maybe never been to Martins Beach, describe the surf break? Well, I was one of those people that had never been there until it was closed. Uh, you know, I'm originally from Southern California, so, you know, it takes a little bit of time to figure out all the surf breaks up north here. Um, you know, it, it's an interesting break because it's, you know, it has a lot of reef breaks to it. It's not a beach break. Uh, you know, so there's a, a left uh, down south, there's a right, which is a, a little bit mushy, and then there's a cove with a, another left in it. Uh, you know, good waves, not epic waves, but, you know, definitely it has its days. But, you know, it, it's more just the, the ability to sit in that spectacular area. You know, it's like there are some places in Santa Cruz that are like that as well. You're just out in the water. You have this, you know, the sea otters popping up next to you. You're just, it's amazing to be in that place. And so Martin Beach is one of those places where maybe the waves aren't you know, Jeffrey's Bay, but, you know, just being out there is amazing. Uh, can I ask you a question, Mark? It seems like the California courts are bringing protracted land disputes between landowners and public. Why is this one so, um, so much in the news? Well, there was a very curious ruling early on in, a, in yet another case um, brought by a group called the Friends of Martins Beach, okay. where a local judge in San Mateo County ruled that because Vinod had purchased what was once part of an ancient... Um, Mexican land grant right. uh, in the 1830s before California became a state that somehow the benefits of that land grant inured to Vinod buying this property in 2008, hundreds of years after the California Constitution, and somehow mysteriously and magically provided Vinod with the right to close off public beach access. Right. Uh, that is considered a very strange and unusual legal ruling and is now 
uh, at the Court of Appeals. And we're, we fully expect that the Court of Appeals will be able to straighten this out. If you take the position that because your land can be traced to before California became a state and therefore you don't have to obey any modern laws, uh, it would apply to virtually the entire state of California. There are entire counties like Santa Barbara County that are all former Rancho land grants. What's Speaking of Santa Barbara, Oh, Mark, ahead, I have a quick Dylan, question for you. Uh, I'd always wondered how it was possible that those rights are passed along from property owner to property owner. It seems like it should only be for the original owner that was given the land grant. It shouldn't pass from generation to generation. How is that possible? N nobody had ever found it to be possible before Judge Gerald Buckwall okay. <laughs> in San Mateo a few months ago. And it has left legal scholars scratching their head because the implications are so dramatic. I mean, if, if this is Vinod's uh, rights, what about all of the lands that the Native Americans possessed long before California became a state? And by the way, most all property can be traced back to prior to 1850 when California became a state. So should I be able to turn my house into a casino or a brothel or a nuclear power plant? Right. Uh, the implications of this are disturbing to say the least. And we're very hopeful that in this Martin, the Friends of Martin's Beach case that's currently before the Court of Appeals, that the Attorney General is going to step in and help the courts clarify that it, it doesn't matter who or when you bought your property, you're still bound by the California Constitution. D Dylan, um, how do we get a hold of, how does the public get a hold of your cause that you're here to speak about? Okay, uh, well, we're on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Open Martins Beach. Okay. Uh, also on Twitter as well, twitter.com slash Open Martins Beach. Website? Uh, we have openmartinsbeach.org. Okay. Uh, those three different places. Okay. Well, I, getting hang back. TC, hang oh. on. Let's go to commercial real quick. Okay, go for I want to come back. I want to talk about the, the other part of um, California being Malibu or the ranch, for example, how this is, is this a similar instance to that, to those properties? I'm going to come back in a second, but first of all, this portion of the show is brought to you by Dogmatic Arts. Home of Rocky, Rap Boy, Nat Young, Dollar, Nelly, Rapogel, Barney, of course. Amazing photos of your surfer for sale at Dogmatic Arts in Capitola. Stop in, check out the art, and say hi to Patrick. All at the Lighthouse Building in downtown Capitola. This is Neil and TC with the Off the Radio Show talking about Martin's Beach tonight. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hey, this is Susie from Flip Flop Shop Santa Cruz with a special offer for the Off the Lip Radio Show listeners. Now through April 15th, get 10% off when you mention the Off the Lip Radio Show and how much you love Neil and TC. We've got some great new styles and brands for spring. Sanook being one of them, happy, friendly, and fun. Check it out. We've listened to our customers. You guys have asked for arch support sandals. We got them. Bionic. You've also asked for larger sizes. Now carrying 17 and selected brands and styles. Protect yourself with sunny sun bum sunscreen. Flip Flop Shop Santa Cruz. We are located 1528 Pacific Avenue, downtown Santa Cruz. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, Off the Lip Radio, going nationwide. Neil, TC, want to put my support out there for you guys, and thank you all for supporting People's Coffee. I'm uh, Kurt, the owner here. We're on the corner of 17th and Bromer in Live Oak Plaza. Wow, we just made seven years, so we're here to stay. We're not going anywhere. We put out an amazing cup of coffee. If you haven't been down to check us out, take a moment. We don't disappoint. We care about your happiness. People's Coffee, corner of 17th and Bromer. We will not let you down. This is Brad Timmy. And Cleo from Cleo's Corner at Pono Hawaiian Grill. Featuring wraps, teriyaki bowls, plate lunches, amazing and creative salads, vegetarian and gluten-free options, and over 20 different types of poke, all made to order, fast, fresh, and healthy. And what's your favorite, Kaleo? Um, the chicken fingers. Located at 120 Union Street in downtown Santa Cruz. Call us for takeout at 831-426-PONO. Or check us out on the web at PonoHawaiianGrill.com. We put the ono in Pono. This is the After the Radio Show you're listening to on KSCO. We ask you to listen and be heard. We are broadcasting from the surf capital, Santa Cruz, California. We are attempting to record all the surf and skate history 
in Santa Cruz and beyond in this part of surfing history is vital. Uh, Mark, I know we get the phones blowing up, but Mark, you want to talk about one, one or two points before we got like 15 minutes and it's going to fly by. So I want to make sure you have the, the podium and, and want to say what you want to say. Well, let me just finish up on where we are with the Surfrider Foundation litigation and also with the legislation. Uh, the legislation has passed the state assembly and it is currently residing in the, it has passed the state senate and it is residing with the state assembly. There will be a vote on the floor of the assembly coming up likely in the next month. And assuming that it passes the assembly, it will be on to working with the governor to make sure that Governor Brown signs it into law. And then State Lands Commission will have one year to negotiate with Vinod before condemning uh, and bringing an eminent domain procedure to establish public beach access. Okay. And tomorrow's a big day for you. Tomorrow we're doing uh, the final closing arguments in the Surfrider Foundation v. Kosla or Martins Beach LLC 1 and 2 legal cases to establish Coastal Act violations. And that'll be at 9 a.m. in the Superior Court in San Mateo County in Redwood City. Everyone's c encouraged to come out if you possibly can. It's going to be a media frenzy. Okay. And in studio right now we have Nick Strong Savich. Oh, that was close. You, you almost got it. I, need to, I need to write it down. Sevich. Svetich. Svetich. Oh, it's, you know it's written phonetically in my email got, your tag. Your team got no in the World Cup, so I'm calling oh, you what I call you. Oh, my gosh. Your team did it equally yeah. poorly. My team <laughs> sucks, dude. <laughs> uh, you're from Save the Waves Coalition, and you have a question, I think, for Mark tonight, because... Uh, this is something that you got one ear, you got your both ears too, correct? Yeah, we've been uh, tracking this case for a long time at uh, at Save the Waves, and actually last year in our film festival, uh, we showed the uh, documentary that was produced by Surfrider and the Inertia okay. on uh, on the whole case. And uh, you know, we took this around the country, so it went to L.A. and it went to New York, and there was a lot and a lot of people following the story. And so, I guess my question is, uh, what are the implications of this case as a precedent? for other places in California or across the nation, uh, you know, in, in other access sort of issues? Well, it's a career maker for lawyers if Vinod were to win, because certainly uh, well-to-do individuals, coastfront property owners, celebrities, uh, and everyone else uh, would be presented with a new opportunity to close down existing public access ways if Vinod were to prevail. Uh, and that's why it's just critically important that um, he comply with the Coastal Act and allow the Coastal Commission to balance his security and private property concerns right. with maximizing public opportunities to coastal resources along the shore in California, which is the underlying purpose of the law. Okay. Jeff, Zachary from Felton, you, uh, you're, on the, you're on the Off the Bay Show. Do you have a question? Uh, Yes, sir. Um, I was wondering when they're going to, like, tear down the wall at privates so I can surf those, those, those tumultuous waves. But, I mean, privates, people are, can buy a key from out of town, you know, for hundreds of dollars. And then, furthermore, if we get the, the public coastal commission involved, they're going to put some trash cans up, two trash cans, and they're going to charge the city $2 million a year Maybe not that. Maybe two hundred thousand. Um, you know, the bureaucrats are going to come in there like a bunch of vultures, and it, we need some oversight. We need surfer surf power. Anyway, okay. well, you I, got I love your show. Thanks, I love you buddy. Guys. Well, you got the word out there Thank on you. the air, so hopefully someone's going to help you out with that issue. Oh. On the phone right now, we have Charles from Santa Cruz. Am I got the right button, Charles? How are you? Hi. Um, good. It's Charles from Pleasure Point. I ran for supervisor trying to deal with these issues. But one of my big issues now... What's your last name, Charles? Paul Den. You can't miss okay. Charles. He's the yoga dude at Sewer Peak. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah hey. Right. What's up, Charles? People <laughs> for the Preservation of Pleasure Point, five-time uh, Coastal Commission appeals. Um, my big problem right now is Black's Point's been closed the pathway. Um, Susan Craig says it's not a priority issue, though it's probably a violation. And I think it's very interesting, I uh, know, that we have an issue that's resolved as, as red tagged, but we can't get our own front yard opened again. So it would be nice to get some issue, you know, some, something going on on this problem. Okay. All right. That's, so that's an interesting one. Thanks, Shaws. 
is that the main public access way to Black Point where yeah. people mm -hmm. fish out there? Right. That's been closed. Mm. I didn't know that. You got more work for you, Mark. I mean, that may be a deeded public access way. It's been there forever. Right. Nick, um, I, no, I, I got a quick question. Go um, I guess there, it's going to be appealed whoever wins or loses this case. That's most right. likely right. And um, my 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 question is, and we didn't really talk about this. There's the ranch, oh, yeah. the golden the golden egg of California coast that unless you're entitled and wealthy and have bought your pass, you can go there. Does this case have implications that could change that? It may, but I'm, I'm inclined to say that the, the history and the physical geography of the, the Hollister Ranch, Point Conception, Santa Barbara County area is so substantially different than Martin's Beach that it might be hard to make that case. And what I'm thinking is that Martin's Beach has a long, well-documented century of extensive public beach access, where the Hollister Ranch and the Point Conception area have always been private. I mean, there's not even any public roads that go nearby there. The road to Halama County Park was a donation of the, the Bixby Ranch property. So there, there isn't the same sort of public access history that gives us the legal hooks that we have at Martin's Beach. Okay. You're listening to the Off-Bit Radio Show. This portion show is brought to you by Drug Free Solution, a solution for heroin and opiate addicts. Their detox program, TC, is an app and it takes three days. Check them out at drugfreesolution.com. Learn more about them on Facebook. This is Neil and TC with the Off-Bit Radio Show with our special guest tonight, Mark Bassar from Surfrider Foundation. We'll be right back. Santa Cruz's own beautiful De La Vie Golf Course offers you 18 or 9 holes and a lighted driving range that has 40 stores. So you're almost guaranteed a spot. Check out their great deal. You can buy a county discount card and save each time you play. The card is just 50 bucks and that lets you save around 25% of green fees for one year from the date of purchase. Head professional Tim Blaustolot and his staff invite you to come and play one of the finest golf courses in Northern California. For further information, go to DeLaViegaGolf.com or book your tee time by calling 831-423-7214. Save the Waves Coalition and Surfrider Santa Cruz Chapter are partnering to host a beach cleanup as part of the Santa Cruz World Surfing Reserve Initiative. Join us next Saturday, July 19th at Seabright State Beach from 11 to 1. We've also teamed up with our friends at Boreo Skateboards, the world's first skateboard made from 100% recycled ocean plastics. By collecting used fishing nets and turning them into rippable skateboards, Boreo is helping us to keep the oceans clean. Again, join us at Seabright for a chance to win one of these awesome boards and visit us at www.savethewaves.org for more info. Chill Out Cafe on 41st Avenue Santa Cruz is not just a block from some of the world's best surf, but it is also where you can go relax and order the tastiest grub before and after your sesh. Plump burritos, fresh salads, sky-high sandwiches, and a superb selection of hot and cold drinks. They have something for you. Go to chilloutcafesantacruz.com to view their menu, and to place your order to go, call 831-477-0543. Chill Out Cafe, where they roll the fatties. We are back with the Authentic Radio Show, broadcasting from Santa Cruz. We're here tonight with Mark Massara and my guest, T, my co-host TC. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> you too, buddy. And we are discussing this uh, Martin's Beach issue. If you want to call in tonight before we shut down, the phone number is eight three one four seven nine ten eighty. Mark, this is pro bono. This is something you're doing for the love of the sport of surfing and. The other tone is involved. Is something you're doing for, for why are you doing it for pro bono by us? It's just uh, doing somebody a favor or it's taking up a lot of time. But it's the entire legal team is, is doing this pro bono, which means that we're not uh, charging Surfrider for our legal fees. And I, in particular, I'm moonlighting. I mean, I'm general counsel at O'Neill Wetsuits and am fortunate enough to work with a company and a family that encourages me to continue to do this kind of work. And does the O'Neill family support what you're doing with this case? Oh, yeah. No, Jack likes the updates. Jack hmm. says, Jack's go get him. Go <laughs> get him. I think Jack should show up in the courthouse <laughs> tomorrow. It'd be kind of a, that'll stir things up a little bit. Um, 
so does, do people say this guy spent thirty two point five million dollars? You know, if I'm spending thirty two five million dollars, I'm thinking I should do what the heck I want to be able to do. But it just seems like a lot of mo- it seems like a lot. There was a lot of money for that properties, but um, it's a continual you- process of orienting people, wealthy or not, when they come to the California coast, they're participating in a legacy and okay. a property that belongs to everyone. Okay. What's I, I kind of thought it was a bargain. 40 cottages, 89 acres, California beachfront. I don't know. That seems like a pretty good deal to me. <laughs> it, it was a steal if you have it. I mean, he has many billions, so it's a drop in the... You, didn't, you can't, didn't act fast enough with your millions. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even buy the gate. <laughs> can, the, can the public... Uh, notify him what they think. Is there? Do you do you know that if he has a uh, some kind of website or Facebook page, or is is he just sitting in the background? I don't know. I, is it, any public pressure that can be put on Mar- him? OpenMartinsBeach.org. Uh, you can find out how to contact Vinod. Okay. So Crystal Ball, give me get your Crystal Ball on him, Rock. What do you think is going to happen down? You know, five years from now with this piece of property, we're going to win, and eventually uh, there'll be literally tens of millions of dollars in civil penalties owed. Uh, and hopefully Vinod will learn to negotiate and comply with the California Coastal Act. And he'll be able to come to an arrangement with the Coastal Commission, whereby the public will be able to once again use Martin's Beach. Okay. Uh, and he'll come to find that it really isn't a, a dangerous imposition on his private property rights. Right. Up and down the state of California, private property owners... Um, put up with and enjoy public access everywhere. Right now, I'm gonna st- I'm gonna quit the lawyer talk for here for a second, okay? You're M- Mark. You're a surfer, a long time surfer, correct? That's right. Surf Ocean Beach, uh, over 20 years. Okay, now. and I want to ask you a question. You got 40 surfboards at home, don't you? Uh, well, just about 40. <laughs> this guy's got some. This guy's got a quiver in his garage. Well, he, he works for O'Neill. He's a surfer. He's involved with the Surfrider Foundation. He's passionate about our coast. Hey, some guys collect Ferraris, some guys collect surfboards. Have you, know? you surfed Martin's right. Beach? Oh, yes. Oh, you have? Oh, it's great fun. Yeah. And it's terrific. You know, I, I love all beaches in California. The most crowded ones, the most polluted ones, the desolate ones, the forested ones. They're all fabulous. Okay. Your favorite board? Um, you know, I, I have so many boards of every size. I, I like fishes right now. I like quads. I, You've got some cool, like, single fin guns that are stacked away somewhere. That How would you know what he's got if, there? If in you're going to be serious about house. ocean, <laughs> <laughs> you've <been> so well. <laughs> you got to have a lot of boards. <laughs> yeah. And, um,. How about the ladies? How about the ladies from uh, It Ain't Pretty making this movie? What do you think about the women surfing? And how about the women surfing when it comes to Mavericks? Do you think they belong? I know all these women, uh, and they are badass surfers. Uh, there's, we have a group of women surfing Ocean Beach, and they've been at it for a long time. And most of them are better than a lot of the guys out there. They're, right. They're doing really well. Well, they're definitely the underdogs. I mean, Skinny's six. Like, look at Skin Dog. What six foot two twenty? I mean, Bianca's what she five one. Hundred pound. Yeah, buck I don't 10. know. Yeah, she doesn't. She's. Skinny. I mean, yeah. The size of these, the different sizes, it makes it just makes the women seem to be underdogs. And it's just all hard. what they're doing is incredible. Well, as we know, women's surfing, and especially in big wave surfing, um, it's here. And it's not going anywhere. And, um, you know, we're going to see some big wave world tour uh, events coming up. And it's, it's, it's exciting. They deserve right. to be out there. Right. So, Mark, you enjoying this case? Something you're enjoying? Oh, it's fabulous. It, it, I mean, it, it really is like fun. enjoying sinking your teeth into. It seems better than... You Most know, of the cases you may be dealing with. I, I peddled this legal theory, the violations of the Coastal Act, trying to bring a narrowly focused case that would require Vinod to return to the Coastal Commission and process permits for several years without um, being able to uh, get uh, uh, high-powered lawyers that could really effectively neutralize Vinod's lawyers. Okay. And when Joe Koshad and his law firm came aboard and have adopted Surfrider in this case, it was a game changer. Okay. Hmm. If another, somebody's listening that now has a property issue or similar to this, can they get a hold of you? Oh, sure. I'm easy to find. And how do you, how, you can just Google best, me. Just Google you? Okay. <laughs> just Google Mark Massara. Nick, you over there, got a question over there. Yeah, just, a, just a, a, a quick comment, too. I think there's a lot of ways that people can get involved in, in taking care of their spot. You can get involved, go to, to, go to the website and check out Open martinsbeach.org, okay. or you can also come down and get involved locally in Santa Cruz, too. We're having a, a beach cleanup this Saturday, 
the 19th down at Seabright as part of the World Surfing Reserve Initiative. You're plugging your own deal here. Nice I'm part, job. I'm plugging, I'm plug, great. <laughs> I'm plugging <laughs> Surfrider because we're, we're teamed up with Surfrider. Can I plug my deal? You can plug yeah. whatever you want to. You Whole see? Foods this Saturday, we're doing a skate demo to raise money for the Capitola Junior Guards. And the comedian. Oh, jo uh, August 2nd, Joe Sib. We're having a comedy show at the Santa Cruz Boardroom. Mark um, Charles is free. Come today. Yeah, free Excellent. tacos. It's going to be a great comedy show. He is a professional comedian with a skateboard background. Okay, you've been listening tonight to the After It Video Show. Hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you've been informed about what's happening at Martin's Beach. I want to thank Dylan Christensen for coming in tonight. His wife, Amber's here. She didn't want to get on the, uh, on the yeah. microphone. She's she, shy. She's shy. She's very shy. <laughs> didn't want to say where. I want to thank Nick Strong. Sevich. Nice. That was, that was really close. Yeah, like ninety two percent. The V. <laughs> you know what? It's just Nick. <laughs> and a very special guest, Mark Massara. Yes. Uh, lead counsel for Surf Rider in the Martins Beach case. Wanna thank you for coming down tonight and sharing with us with the public of what's going on. We now you know what amazes me the most about this case, Mark, I got to really uh, commend you for this, is that you're doing this pro bono and it's yep. for the love of beach access. And I, I don't think a lot of people listening understand that. And, and thank you because uh, we have grandkids coming down the road that are going to go to Martin's Beach because of your hard work. Right. Well, thank, thank you. you, Neil, TC, all you guys and the organizations, everybody, for our families and our future. Thank I you very like much. It. Next week, we've got Jeff Denholm, one arm, big wave surfer, unbelievable athlete waterman coming in the show uh the week after that we have bud freitas and after that we have mr don bostick this has been neil and tc with the mm -hmm. off the radio show we really appreciate you listening tonight check it out on youtube later on on the podcast to be available tomorrow on the off, off the radio show facebook page good night your source for news sports traffic and weather am 1080 ksco santa cruz san jose Excessive outdoor watering is banned, as is hosing